if you can if you find somebody that is capable of 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 like in in cases defending people who they really don't like and they really dislike and they think on the whole is negative that's that that's a that's a good indicator um that that person is capable of nuanced thought and that they're more likely to have a reasonable uh, perception of this person than somebody who goes in very like black and white opinions about some people. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that necessarily. Mendo says, thanks for making your stance clear. I'm glad we can all be clear about our stances here. You just need to hold up a defense for people who say buying human beings are sexist, quote, merely about the buying. That's how you want to advocate for you, save with your chest. And then it seems in there. At least in this case, we're not really talking about going after one's job, right? We're just talking about one's suitability for a progressive board. I mean, at the very least, what. <laughs> okay, look, you can do the edgy jokes if you want to. I'm just saying that, like, God. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's just weird. You can do it. Edge gets viewers. True. They do get viewers. Uh, but if you're boring, uh, but if he was boring, he'd be a 100 viewer and you're like, you kicked W, true, he would be, but like, damn, <laughs> it helps me in situations like this. Vosh, manifesto, let's check this out. My goal, I'm just going to be really watching through this and, uh, and giving my takes. Wow, hot take, very unusual style on to go over videos, but, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. We're reading this now. Stop linking. Linker is about to get executed in chat. <clears throat> Posted by user wannabe underscore sad boy. The effort post. Wannabe boy. sad boys based, by the way. Hey, my duders. I wanted to make a post to kind of just discuss my feelings on former DGG -er for life, Vouch. It's one of the first times I've made a post like this with actual legitimate feelings of disappointment. However, with recent events happening, such as Destiny's ban, and his reaction to them, including the DGG -er purge from Vosh's sub, which finally hit me, Lameo, I felt like it was time to make this post. I was someone who knew Vouch when he was Irish Laddie, a member of Destiny's community. I'm not going to lie, what I knew of him back then was not great, and I thought of him as a bit of a lol cow and a bit of a wannabe Destiny. Particular things that stood out in my mind from that period was him telling conservative DGG or X-Skills Me that in Vouch's ideal society, he'd have X-Skills Me executed. And the sex pest drama. Oh, including things that. like him Debates. talking about his love for horsecock and shit like that. The one that taxation is theft debate. Oh, that, was the, that debate was rough on all accounts, okay? That. I have, um... I've been beta testing. Why would you not be signed up when you could go to surf? Shut the fuck up, Destiny. I don't want your goddamn advertisement. Ugh, why didn't you link to the timestamp? Why didn't you link to the timestamp? Two years ago, Irish Laddie. I wasn't fucking done. Also Irish Laddie. Talks for 20 minutes straight. Also Irish Laddie. Interrupts excuse me constantly. Also Irish Laddie. Bulldozes excuse me and Destiny constantly. <laughs> I'll summarize and somebody can call me out if I'm lying. Being lying. So at some point in this debate, I think, um, Irish Laddie essentially says, in my ideal society, people like X Gilsme would be executed for the political positions that they hold. And X Gilsme's political positions, he's just like a like bog standard conservative, basically. Um, that was the no. Uh, what was going. Excuse me, but well, I don't know if I don't think it's bog standard conservative. I think X Gilsme was specifically like taxationist stuff. So yeah, I don't know about about standard conservative, but yeah. He says it multiple times throughout the video. Then Irish Laddie is Bosch. Yes, correct. Um, for those that don't know, he came from my community uh, like ten years ago. He's been in my community for a long time. However, even with all this, I was glad when he started his own independent streaming career. I was upset when he got banned for the Glass Israel shit. Wait, we have a timestamp. Coming into this with him basically saying he would kill me under his political system. Okay, so, I have, okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. For one, I didn't say I would do it. I'm lazy, okay? Let's not assign that responsibility to me. But would you be killed generally? Oof, I don't know. You make a solid case every time you open your mouth. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of that statement at all. Correct, but here's the problem is that I'm having a serious discussion here. I really believe capitalism is the best system for what you claim to care about. And here you are saying people like me get murdered. Like, wh why would I? Okay, okay like, this, we've gotten pretty non sequitur now, okay? Chill, I'm not sequitur. He says I don't understand his ideology now, but he's, he's advocated for actually having me murdered. So well, yeah, but if his ideology would say that people like you were exploited. Fuck! I'm running so much defense for Irish Light here. He wasn't as good at arguing yet, so I think I had to like reform oh, a lot okay. of to be fair, this is three years ago, okay? Probably different since then, okay? So we'll, we'll keep that in mind, okay? This was three years ago. It was a rough debate, but it was three years ago. This point to make them a little bit more coherent, a little bit more charitable. There's such a level that it's enforcing inherently immoral uh, applications of society or whatever. Then, I mean, his thing would logically follow, right? Like, don't, don't say that, like, I'm, like, I'm strawmanning his worldview, and his worldview includes execution of me, so don't I have some right to automatically, well, you like... Have, well, you okay. haven't strawmanned me in that regard. No, I expect you to act in your own personal interest, which is to defend capitalism to your dying breath. I don't fault you for that. Um, but what I do fault you for, however, is acting as though you're mounting the substantive critique of my ideology when we haven't even begun to discuss what sort of alternatives I would offer to the problem posed by capitalism. Well, I know, entails, I know it entails killing me, so what else would you, what else would you, uh, after you kill me, no, what killing life? you would be for fun, okay? Yeah, for, for, I'm sorry, you're right. I should tone it down. For efficacy. All right, let's let's dial it back. Obviously, you know, for Twitch. Okay, this is back. all in Minecraft. Okay, nothing else. All right, purely Minecraft. A little bit. Okay. So here's a problem I think exists. I don't think people get to make free decisions. Of okay. Anyway. Okay. Edgy. Very edgy. Very larpy things. Do not endorse. Cringe. Don't say that. Not a good idea. Stop. Bad shit. Three years ago, though. I'm just gonna mention it's not not super long ago. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm just going to keep that in mind. 
I was glad when I started to saw Vosh have some success on YouTube, especially at the beginning of Destiny's lefty art. It was cool to see Vosh going against conservatives, and as someone who would consider himself to be the left of Destiny, although still a suckdem, it was cool to see a more left-leaning voice that seemed to at least be more measured and capable of good debate. Two hours and 20 minutes for the other execution mention. We only need one. We're good. Okay. How does it come back to the United States? Are foreign people going to start buying up businesses here? Like, how, how, does, that, how does that money come back uh, to us? Well, this this is the tough part. This is the part I can't talk with skills me because this is where the guns come out, you know? Wait, so we would have to go to war to enforce our system on other people? Or? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. To clarify, we would not have to go to war with others. We would have to, to say it politely, incentivize corporations currently stationed in the uh, United States to keep them from fleeing it's to it's other nations. No, 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 no. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I just want to nail this point down, okay? Because this is an actual conversation about you guys talking yeah. about it, okay? So if we were to begin, if we were to bring all of our supply chains back to the United States, stop engaging in, in foreign trade in the current ways that we do, our products well, would wait, become. We, we would. We, we wouldn't have to stop that. Wait, 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 you're talking about becoming a fully self sufficient country. So you're no, no, I didn't. I'm very sorry okay. if I'm telling that. But what I mean to say is, during the transition to socialism, there will be a period of economic upheaval that will disrupt our trade relations. Okay, 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 okay. So let's 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 ignore. Wait, wait, hold on. If we were to this focus is, on, on, I love trade policy. It's so fun. I honestly love discussing trade. Okay, hold on. What did he say here? I need to pay attention. We're good. Okay. How does it come back to the United States? Are foreign people going to start buying up businesses here? Like, how, how does that? How does, how does that come back to the United States? Are foreign people going to start buying up businesses? Does the money come back uh, to us? Well, this this is the tough part. This is the part I can't talk with that skills me because this is where the guns come out. You know. Wait. So we would have to go to war to enforce our system on other people? Oh, oh no, 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 sorry, sorry. sorry. To clarify. We would not have to go to war with others. We would have to. It's about global socialism? Is that what this is about? To say it very politely, incentivize corporations currently stationed in the uh, United States to keep them from fleeing it's to other nations. So no, 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 no. Okay. So they're talking about passing social, doing socialism in your own country, uh, and then how to stop companies running away to other to other countries, basically. How do how do you keep them there? And then Vosh is implying you keep them there by force, right? Or like through through government. No, hold on, wait, hold on, I just want to nail this point down, okay? Because this is an actual conversation about you guys talking yeah. about today, okay? So, if we were to begin, if we were to bring all of our supply chains back to the United States, stop engaging in, in foreign trade in the current ways that we do, our products well, would wait, become... We, we would. We, we wouldn't have to stop that. Wait, 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 wait you're talking about becoming a fully self-sufficient country, so you're talking... No, no, I didn't. I'm very sorry okay. if I implied that. But what I mean to say is, during the transition to socialism, there will be a period of economic upheaval that will disrupt our trade relations. Okay, 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 okay so let's, let's let's ignore what I just said then. If we were to focus on, on ethics over over profit or over our economic well-being, eventually other countries would become much more competitive than us in regards to trade, and it would hurt our, it would hurt our export market significantly. When true. This is true. This is, this is one of the big reasons why for climate change specifically uh we needed to be like a collective agreement for everyone to do it by the way thank you for the raid loaner box it needs to be like a collective thing because um if if just europe or just the us or just australia or just whatever decides to okay we're going to to set a hard emission cap and we're not going to go over it even though it might hurt aspects of our economy um, the other countries that don't set that cap, they're going to be relatively advantaged when it comes to their economic competitiveness and economic productivity. Therefore, because anyone can undercut anybody else, nobody wants to take that first step. Because if they do that, if they regulate themselves, then the other countries are not going to do so and they're going to take a relative advantage from that because you are now relatively economically less productive than you were before. This is why you need trade agreements that's like, hey... If you don't do this, you are kicked out and your trade is going to be garbage and your economy is going to be dog shit. So therefore, you got to be here with our trade agreement. And in our trade agreement, you have to follow these rules and these regulations. Therefore, everybody does them. You can't undercut each other. And therefore, you know, everybody has incentive to actually take the step instead of like, you know, it being like, you know, yeah, jump off the edge. I'll, I'll jump right after you. I'll go. Just, 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 yeah, let's go. Three, two, what? Uh, bye bye. You know, instead of something like that happening. Um... But yeah, so this is a this is a is a good point by by Destiny. How if the U.S. domestically makes changes that is going to make their productivity worse, uh, that is going to relatively strengthen other actors and relatively weaken the U.S.'s economy. When we start to experience the the economic pains of that of not being able to export products to other people and whatnot, how, how, what do we do? We just eat those economic losses and hope that we can he kind said, of. He said, he said we just confiscate the property. We execute people who don't obey. Whoa, said... whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, I probably I probably will say that, but I haven't said that yet. So let's. To export products to other people and whatnot. How, how, what do we do? We just eat those economic losses and hope that we can he kind said, of. He said, he said we confiscate the property. We execute people who don't obey. He whoa, said, whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, I probably, I probably will say that, but I haven't said that yet. So you let's, did. Let's, wait, let's, you did say that though. Said, no, no, no. We'll get to the, we'll get to the explosive finale down the road. Okay. Um. Yes, Stephen. One of the unfortunate truths of being a socialist is you have to accept that your nation will not get to enjoy the skyrocket GDP growth that capitalist nations get to enjoy. There is going to be a sacrifice of some economic efficiency at the bet to the benefit of hopefully making life better for everybody. Now, does that leave us open to being slowly economically consumed? Well, by then is the question about. Okay, Okay, so are the quality of life improvements ascertained by those domestic changes? Are they going to outweigh the economic losses and the damage thereof by whatever changes you're making? And that's the kind of calculation that needs to be done there. There are nations that don't have our same, you know, ethical standards. Absolutely. And then there's also other negatives that come with trade, but it's complicated. It does. That's why... Whew. 
That's why I'm glad I live in the United States of America with the world's strongest military that can defend itself if necessary. I would like to see a socialist cascade because as we, and pardon me for dreaming here, but as we go socialist and we no longer exploit developing nations, the uh, um, socialist movements that have been growing in fervor in those countries since the Soviet Union took rise would hopefully have a little bit more leeway to flex because they aren't being um, stimmied by uh, American corporations going over there and funding their people to beat them into submission. Hopefully America going socialist would have a cascading effect. And within, I'm gonna be optimistic, a century, we could see something comparable in most of the nations of the world. Is it risky? Yes. Are we all going to die anyway? Yes. I think it's worthwhile. That's a whole Was that an of... answer? I'm not trying to just jerk off. It's just theory crafting. Like, it, you might as well be describing like Middle Earth policy or something. This is no. It's I just I answered Stephen's. Well, question. like no, no. So like I understand your answer, and this is gonna make you maybe kill yourself. I hope you don't do it on stream. But like my issue with this is that Jesus this Christ. answer. There are so many points at which. Oh my god! This is just three years ago, and everyone's so edgy. Things could become catastrophic. Oh there were God. still things that bothered me a bit about his content, for sure. For one, he would engage in this weird posturing about his sexual prowess. A particular noteworthy example being the Tacoma web clip. I've heard other women tell me this about Vosh's content, moment. but I've never actually, I always kind of assumed it was Banger. a meme, but apparently this happens pretty often. Um, I think the most I saw this validated was when I watched his like drunk stream and I noticed that it was like some hour long ramble about how sexually amazing he was. I thought it was kind of weird. Um, but apparently, I've heard apparently this a lot of the stream. I, don't, I don't, truly don't know because I just don't watch his stream that much because I don't have time to watch streams, but. <laughs> this is a, such a base Wait, clip. Is this guy seriously saying that I can't get laid? Incredible, I'll give you 5,000 if you can get Poontang before January 1st. Do you have any idea who the fuck you're talking to? When I got off tin when I got off Tinder, because of the fucking quarantine, Tacoma wept. Even, like, ignoring the fact that I have a girlfriend, even if we're just talking like randos, I'm two hours away right now from being inside somebody else. This is one- I, I have two skills, and it's non-monogamy and speaking publicly, okay? <laughs> Do some fucking research. <laughs> Paste, Vosh. Giga Chad Vosh. Oh my god. Oh, that's some- yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, that and horse cock. <clears throat> Which always made me a little uncomfortable with the sex pest shit. Second, there were times where watching debates, I knew the exact lines of argument he was going to go down because we both heard them from the same person. Destiny. This extended to mannerisms and rhetorical style a lot as well. Wait, let's talk about some of these things. Um, yeah, Des uh, Vosh had the the incident with the the sexual harassment. Um, to my knowledge, that occurred, and yeah, that that's definitely something that definitely something that happened. Uh, there's a post on Vosh's subreddit where he addressed this, obviously. Uh, not good, not okay that he did that. Um, but from my understanding, it seems like he's 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 done, um, he's done quite a lot to, yeah, to to come back to that and and to yeah to to make up and rehabilitate from that. So, yeah, that's from my understanding of that that things that are going on and and the, the history of that and the way the Vosh's handle it. Um, using the exact lines of arguments, this is undeniably true to some extent, right? This is a bit of a mix. So, number one. Um, there are absolutely time where you can see directly, okay, Destiny said this exact same thing, he ran through this exact same line of argumentation, and Vosh is also using it. Which is fine, to be fair. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, with using other people's arguments. That's perfectly okay. Um, <clears throat> there's some times when I think Destiny will be a bit over, the kind of, like, uh, engaged when it, when it comes to saying, like, okay, these are my arguments people have recycled. So I remember there was one debate about um vosh was actually this was again vosh was having a debate i think it was against big papa fascist about migration and vosh brought up a study and and then uh, for migration it was a, it was like a giovanni perry one right it was a pretty popular one and then destiny was like oh you know he got this from me you know uh like this is like an argument that i made this is a study i used to reference and that specifically um that study i'd never i never knew that destiny had referenced it but it was one that i was familiar with from my own research on migration and stuff like that so i think that Sometimes, uh, definitely a lot of it, it is uh, arguments that, that Destiny's made that other people use very, very frequently, including Vosh. Um, but also sometimes uh, Destiny can be a bit too over-accrediting of a lot of things that are being said, which, to be fair, it's hard to draw the line and being like, exactly like, okay, what's the probability that this person find this out independently versus they saw me talk about it and then are reusing it? I understand that, but it definitely happens that sometimes arguments are attributed to Destiny that aren't really from Destiny, such as in that case with the Giovanni and Perry study in that Vosh versus Big Papa Fascist migration debate. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a mixed thing here. Uh, when it comes to how much arguments are copied or used by other people. Which, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with, with using arguments from other people, obviously. Um, as long as you don't, like, deny it when someone asks you or tells you about arguments. But yeah, they made a good argument, you know? Just, that's the way you handle it. Well, that was okay. I like Destiny, I like his style, and I like his arguments. Vosh clearly copied you. Yeah, of course, everyone copies me. So what if Vosh copied him a bit? However, the things that worried me the most... And the thing that would end up being a warning sign for things to come were Vouch's ego, a focus on projecting strength and an admission to being completely willing to use misinformation if he thought it helped him reach a good political end, and a hand-waving of having to answer hard philosophical questions and building political values up from there, as he acknowledges in the morally lucky argument with Rem. 
Um, something to speak of real quick about. So, uh, uh, okay. Would be wouldn't stuff would be Voss's ego projecting strength. Okay, I can talk to the projecting strength part. He is a very and this is something he's talked about, especially at the beginning. He talked about this a lot more. Very, very masculine person, very like projecting strength person, which is a beneficial rhetorical advantage to have and like an aesthetic advantage to have. So I think that's true. A mission to being completely willing to use misinformation if he thought that helped him reach a good political end. The misinformation thing is complicated. Um I'm not sure exactly where this originated from, so I can't make any conclusive statements. But I do recall some hearing some worrying things where he said things about like, okay, well, you know, I only care about the, the outcomes necessarily. So if me using misinformation or bending the truth a little bit leads to good outcomes, I don't really care too much about that. Which I, I don't think necessarily there's anything wrong in the moral justification for that. I just think it's not holistic in that... There is a harm incurred by being dishonest, by reaching misinformation as well, that I don't think people properly account for often. It's not just like, okay, well, sure, you know, I lied in this thing, but hey, I promoted something good that I know is good through lying with this. Uh, number one, it promotes just dishonest dialogue. Number two, if you're ever called out on that, you lose everybody's trust like that. Number three, you doing that is going to be weaponized by conservative groups, or just groups that generally disagree with you. And it's going to be very prime ammunition towards that, towards discrediting not only you, but your entire arguments and your spheres and everything you stand for and stuff like that. So um, yeah, these types of external externalities to using misinformation, a lot of people don't have to take into consideration when they answer the questions like, okay, is it okay to bend the truth a little bit or lie a little bit when it comes to promoting your beliefs? And I I, I don't I think I recall seeing that Vosh didn't get this extra holistic part is he had a bit more of like a one-dimensional understanding of the use of misinformation at one point, and that's where this stems from. Uh, and I don't think that's I don't think using misinformation uh, to to reach your desired political end is obviously positive, um, because I think that there's all these negatives of using misinformation that are very serious and ought to be addressed. And I think it's like a virtuous thing to have like an honest conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, let's keep watching. About this, um, and I don't I do notice this happens a lot. I talk about this a lot. I think that some people will skim like a surface level uh, appearance and they try to emulate that, but they don't understand why it works. So um, I'll jerk myself off for a second. One of the reasons why I grew in popularity in 2016, 2017 was because I was a left leaning person who was willing to like go into like the trenches and fight like really dirty with people and like scream and shout and be like antagonistic and edgy and all that. But uh, what misinfo? I think uh, Arnold brought this up here. If we had a clip, that would be great. Maybe this video is going to show a clip. The misinfo bit was because of Brianna Taylor. People were saying she was sleeping and Vosh was using utilitarian logic saying that it wasn't that bad to tell people that. Um, so, yeah, from, from that, allegedly. But, yeah, I would I want to say clip, which is why I'm being a bit like, I recall seeing this because I don't have all the clips on hand right away. Um, but, yeah. Um, Vosh did say that, though. He said that while he would bend the truth... Uh, that while he would bend the truth for the help of political goals, he hasn't found gender justification for this. Okay, so. Something that's really important to understand is that that was who I was, and to some extent who I still am. Like, that's like a genuine representation of what I am. I wasn't doing that to project an image, and I wasn't trying to foster or cultivate some false sense of, this is what I think a hyper-masculine debater, or this is what I think it looks like to own people. That was just like a personality that I had. Um, that's, that, that, that's who I was. I think that some people see the, like, what that looks like on the end, and then they try to bite that, but it's not really who they are, and they end up going overboard in some ways that ends up looking really cringe. If somebody could link me right now to the YouTube video where Vosh explains the tactical end bomb, I would love to read that on stream. Does anybody have a link to that fucking YouTube video that I'm talking about? <laughs> oh man, my, I'm, so I'm not sure. I, I'm aware I of this tactical end bomb incident. Okay, we're all we all we all are aware of that. Um, but um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure specifically what what's what's being referenced here. Uh, when it comes to talking about afterwards. Slurs, when I'm talking about slurs, is because if we're gonna have a conversation about slurs, it's really silly to say things like the F slur or the N word. Like if you're not- if you Appreciate you going over my post resources. Appreciate you for writing these really good posts to go through and to, yeah, uh, to talk about and, you know, to make videos about, like the Demon Wall one. So thank you, one of me. You don't have the maturity to like even utter the word in a conversation, then just don't talk about it. This is it's too triggering for you. Like, it just feels like really goofy. That feels unbelievably silly to me. Um, I don't do it for shock value. Um, I ban people when they make sense. Like, it's, that's not like my goal. It's like, oh, what the fuck are going? It's just like, we're having a conversation about these words. These are the words we talk about as we're having a conversation about them. Like, that's it. Um, now, I think Vosh, though, so I think people hear me do that. And like, oh my God, I want to say slurs like that. Oh my God, it's awesome. Um, I think people get that idea. And then I think Vosh ends up dropping an N bomb or something in here. No! He did, did he delete his comment? Oh no! Hold on, there's gotta be a screenshot. Oh, okay, okay. He might have deleted his comment because I've made fun of him semi-recently, I think, for it. But this was the comment that he put underneath that video. In this video, I drop an N-bomb. A big one. Hard R. I did this to show my interlocutors that their language doesn't impress me. That their slurs don't frighten or disarm me. <laughs> you can see from their reactions that it worked. They were clearly taken aback. It was a power move, which I'm entirely unashamed of. But I understand how that language might have upset some of you. 
This is an example of what I would call an invocation of a slur's power for good. But that's a subjective judgment. I invite you all to discuss this in the comments, critically or otherwise. So I don't know if I agree with, with Destiny's characterization that the, the hyper-masculine thing that Vosh is putting up is is like a facade and isn't genuinely who he is. From everything that I've seen, Vosh has continuously been this like hyper-masculine macho duder person, you know, that's done debates and deep voice and the, the beard and the everything. He seems to have had that consistently be this thing throughout the entirety of his life. So yeah, I don't know if I agree with, with Destiny when he's saying that, oh, this is just something that that Vosh has copied entirely just like and, and pasted onto himself when it doesn't really belong there as he was implying in the beginning. But obviously there is definitely an influence when it comes to Destiny's takes on languages and what is being seen here. Like that's 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 inarguable. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chief. Here's the clip. I don't know what you're saying, but <laughs> power N word move. Like, all right, dude, we got it. Oh, and then the morally lucky thing. But I wanna, fuck! Why do you want to be sad boy? It doesn't link. So yeah, I think Watch talks about like to justify not giving a fuck about understanding any philosophy or whatever, and then obviously that triggers the fuck out of Rem. But who the fuck am I listening to? What is this? <laughs> what is this clip? Oh god. Okay. Prepare to activate your ear drums, okay? Because you need to pick apart from three or four or five distinct different spectrograms of audio right now, guys. Are you ready? Yeah. Triggers the fuck out of Rem, but. Who should be allowed to publicly speak on these matters, especially when everyone, uh, people who are even less educated and less intelligent than we are, somehow, because we're very stupid when it comes to philosophy, apparently, so even when they are when they are out there promoting their narratives and changing people's minds, who should be able to talk? Have Destiny just how to build a main bus? <laughs> uh, people who have at least read the basics of ethics as actually most I'm familiar with the basics of ethics. You just said justifying ethical axioms, which you boy. yourself cannot do and don't need to do. No, do you not know the arguments for and against utilitarianism? I'm familiar with them on a basic level. If you right, listen, you, you just asked me, me, you just asked me to justify- so fair, This is also three years ago, and I was going to mention this before. A lot of these- hold on. Um... Vosh, am I a Jew kill stream? Yeah, a lot of these videos are pretty old. So, so far, we're, we're going over pretty old stuff. We're going over 2019 stuff. Hopefully, we get into some more- from more uh, current stuff as well. But I, I just want to keep that in mind, that a lot of the stuff we're going old is pretty old. By my foundational yeah, belief. Give, give me Mill's fucking have... utilitarian you, arguments. Oh, yeah. Remy, okay, so, so, Remy, there, Remy, 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 Stop. Okay. With these points taken together, it means that Vouch is by default not engaging in good faith in any discussion he has. His focus is on appearing stronger than the other person, so he will never admit he's wrong in a debate because it would look weak. To the extent that he said he's willing to lie if he thinks he can get away with it. You should have linked to these videos where we argue about that. So let's say you've you've uh, you've popped content and it's a little misleading, a little reductive, mm -hmm. but the message is good, it pushes people in the right direction, and it's misleading, reductive. Not quite misinformation, but misleading. It's very, very close to, to misinformation, to be fair. But, yeah. The end, they have links to resources that you could read up on to be more educated. Yeah, the philosophy clip, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think that proves something necessarily super strongly. You have pop content, and yeah. it's a little misleading, a little reductive, mm -hmm. but the message is good. It pushes people in the right direction, and at the end, they have links to resources that you could read up on to be more educated on it. Do you think that's acceptable? So things like this, I'm going to preempt Destiny's argument, okay? I don't know if he's gonna say the same thing, but things that are misleading and that are reductive. The issue with that is that is that is excellent, that is excellent, excellent, excellent stuff to repurpose into um, into ammunition against your political beliefs. Because if you have things like like the Brianna Taylor thing, for instance, where people say that she was shot in her bed, and then you have like a you know what Bosch said, a pop culture piece that's slightly you know reductive, slight, slightly misleading, where for example they say that Brianna Taylor was shot in her bed, like literally she was in the most helpless state you can be as a human being, which is just like asleep, like not even conscious, right? Um, then you know then if it puts people in the right direction, then I think it's a positive thing. I don't think this is necessarily like a moral issue here, but I think it's a it's a it's a comprehension issue it's like a it's like a holistic analysis issue where those things those types of media pieces they're such good ammunition for conservatives to be like see progressives are lying about what's happened here and if you are a progressive or you like you like agree with this a bit and then some people point out that like hey they're just lying about this and this and this and this they're like they're misleading you about this and this and this then you lose trust for those people and those ideas really really quickly and it's very hard for you to get them back and you end up pushing people more in the other direction that type of rhetoric that type of media is not 
productive, from my opinion. I think there's a lot of ways that it can go wrong. And I think that we have enough facts, we have enough information, we have enough resources at our hands that we don't need to be reductive and we don't need to be misleading, especially with our, our media and with our rhetoric and with our arguments in order to be able to yeah push people towards you know beliefs that we hold or whatever. Uh, so I'm only, I just don't know what you mean in terms of reductive. Everything that you said doesn't sound bad. My mm -hmm. issue right now is that I think, I think that going forward, something I'm trying to be very strict on is I think that it's very, very, very important to report factual stuff correctly. Because I think right now, the biggest issue that we're having probably across the world, but at the very least in the United States, is we are widening this chasm of what both sides see as reality. And that widening of the chasm, even if it's for a good cause, I don't think is good. I think, it, I think at the end of the day, I think that lying a little bit to sell a good message is actually hurting these good messages so much. And it makes it so difficult for anybody to buy into them. You think that if we got rid of so let's take the right out of this because the right doesn't care about misinformation. Okay. If we took every well, the left, left doesn't well, even the the right can utilize um, leftist misinformation for their purposes. So it's don't be that black and white about it. Personally, right now, but yeah. Well, let's. I think that like principally, the right doesn't care about misinformation. Leftists, I think, just are very good at misleading themselves. I don't know if that's true. I think the right is the same. I think a lot of them okay, are very okay, good well, at misleading themselves. Okay, well we can discuss that. <laughs> but that aside, um, if we were to get rid of all content which has any misleading elements. Mm -hmm for the advocacy of liberal or left-leaning politics, I think that would destroy almost everything. We would be left with NPR- Okay, just getting- No, no, okay, hold on. I'm gonna let him finish, my bad. ...leaning politics. I think that would destroy almost everything. We would be left with NPR-style, incredibly empirical, fact-based, and dry commentary. Uh, high-level academia accessible only content no. and maybe a couple of people left this capable is, of threading that line. Wait, this is a yeah, I disagree, I disagree with this for multiple reasons. Number one, you don't need to get rid of everything that's ever existed. You don't need to be so like absolute about it. You can just be like, hey, we need to get better at this going future. And I think it's entirely possible to be non-misleading, to be non-reductive and still talk about things and still have entertaining media that still is appealing to people from a like political, uh, you know, perspective. Um, that people find enjoyable and that influences people. It doesn't have to be just dry NPR reporting. I absolutely don't think so. I, I think that you, this is absolutely like a, a thing that can be done in a responsible way. Um, yeah, but I don't know. It's hard for like each of us to, to prove to it. Obviously, I think I do this to a decent extent. I think most people probably think that they do it themselves. Um, and when I am being reductive or when I am missing things, I will often acknowledge it verbally and be like, hey, I'm oversimplifying this a bit for the purposes of this. I don't think it's very important, or I might be missing some things here. I will like call that out. But I absolutely think it's perfect to remain non-misleading, um, non-reductive, and still push a, uh, like a positive message that is entertaining for people to watch. But also, more more NPR style things probably can be is is not necessarily like a hyper bad thing. But yeah. Wait, bad... hold on. There are people in chat saying good. We lose if that happens. Wait, I, 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 that... I think that this is a bad dichotomy. You can have content that's edgy, engaging, entertaining, aesthetic that doesn't mislead people or lie. The expectation that even reductive content must be excised from people on our side of the no, I think line. reductive content is okay. Well, but what's I'm the just, line then? The line is when you're misreporting the facts, or if you're like completely misrepresenting something, or if you're being so reductive that you're being incorrect. I think if you're being reductive, you should at least acknowledge that you're being a bit simplistic here. But yeah, otherwise, I agree with what Dustin said. Okay, but in this case, I think incorrectness is kind of a a, a gradient. Um, I'm not. Even... Whatever the gradient is, we're way, 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 way far away from where I would be debating the gradient right now. We're just like people just report things that are just factually not true. That's my issue. Like, sure. They you do that, but okay. This means he's not going to change his beliefs due to any logical external challenges or any external logical challenges. Because his politics don't come from the actual philosophical grounding, they're not going to change from internal challenges. The reason I say external logical challenges is because from what he has stated, the only reason he'd ever change his positions was if the optical pressure were so great that it overwhelmed his ego and he moved on them. I began to see this happen, which worried me even more greatly. It happened with him backing off his criticism of black supremacists initially, although he would return to that when he felt his brand was strong enough that he um, was strong enough to keep going on that train. And his criticisms of the LGBT community being less than human, with trans people specifically sub yeah, Let me read this uh, I mean, he's, he's not going to change his beliefs to Due to any external logical challenges, citation there would be interesting, and because his politics don't come from any actual philosophical grounding, philosophy seems a bit shaky, but I think that's the case for pretty much all people who talk about politics online. They're not going to change from internal challenges. I think I would like to see some more things on that, absolutely. I think that those things are just kind of stated. I think we wouldn't need more things here. Um, the reason I say external logical challenges is because from what he has stated, the only reason he'd ever change his position was if optical pressure was so great that it overwhelmed his ego. Uh, because from what he stated, if, if you're referencing a statement, it would be good to have like a citation for this. I began to see this happen, which worried me even more greatly. It happened with him backing off his criticism of black supremacists initially, although he would return to that when he felt his brand was strong to give another way. And his criticism of the LGBT community as being less than human, with trans people being specifically subhuman, losers who won't change the community built on shared mental illness, particularly the trans community. Oh yeah, here's the thing which once again 
this is not this is no responsible rhetoric. This is awful. You shouldn't say these things. Um, but I do want to re make the remark that it's three years ago, which isn't all that long ago, but I think it's important that we mention it. So right now, a lot of the things that we're talking about is kind of long ago. We, we, we haven't gotten a lot of super modern things, apart from that thing about misinformation, that debate about philosophy tube. That's the most recent thing, and that's also why I think is, is one of the most compelling criticisms of Bosch. Oh, yeah. Okay. Losers who won't change in a community built on shared mental illness, particularly from the trans community. Oh, believe me. I know. We'll get more into that later. Oh, and this is his left community online, particularly the LGBT community, is cancerous as fuck. If you're not an idiot, you will agree with me on this. If you have any fucking experience with online like LGBT or leftist discourse, you know it's cancerous as fuck. You understand this. People are hyper fragile. There's a ton, a ton of mental illness. And these, you can't convert these people. They're not reasonable. They have to be excised from the left. And it's because it's coming from dumb fucks who are gay. What if this person says they're gay as hell? Because it's coming from the gays. It's woke now. These people are less than human to me. I have no respect for these people. These people are fucking disgusting. You don't need to be a psychologist to see that a large portion of the broader um, fucking like woke card cancel culture info left is predicated on shared mental illness. Keep hating your life then, working class this Andy. This is particularly prominent in the trans community. If you disagree with me on this, you're wrong. I know it sounds yikesy. It happens anyway. Pretty much every time I deal with dipshits from the left of the trans girls that I notice there's a vastly disproportionate amount of dumb fuck lefty takes in my feed coming from trans people. Like I don't like I don't know. Most of the time when a wildly fucking irrational lefty comes in to make bad faith arguments against me, it's a trans person. That is a fact. If all of these dumb fucks recognize that I despise them and think they're every bit as detrimental to the left as Nazis are, I'm doing good. I want these people to know that they're my enemy. I fucking hate them. I really do. But they're not them. your enemy. Oh no 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 no. Ironic that he's. Uh, any context? This is from a stream. It's called. It's referred to as the Thought Slime stream. Um, I think he had some beef with Thought Slime, and then there was a lot of Twitter things about this, and then this is his thing about this. But yeah, um, not good to say the least. Arguing with Doe in this video. Yes, they are. They hurt me and they hurt you. Because every time some dumb fuck trans girl on Twitter who's acting out mental illness, whining, calling people like me transphobic because I disagree with them, they're hurting the left. No, these people are ill. These people are cancer. They're subhuman. The I don't care. Question. You don't have to do that kind of shit. That doesn't help. Yeah, I'm edgy. I don't give a fuck. It's not just, you, you know that's not just being edgy. Damn right. Yeah, it's edgy the, as shit. No, making a reference to the Jewish question about how like there's like a trans conspiracy or whatever. Like that's not just being edgy. That's like literally calling for the death of trans. Here's Bosch now. You consider his take on trans athletes actually transphobic? I don't know. His t I don't know. I only see him on Twitter, like bullying trans people, and like I only see trans, like little trans accounts, like going private or like freaking out because they get like transphobes in their con replies because Destiny quoted them, and a ton of far right people follow Destiny on Twitter. Okay, this, this is okay. Um, I'm a bit split on the the whole uh, quote tweeting people on. So number one, I hate everyone who's on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, I hate you. A lot. And I mean it. But apart from that, um, when it comes to this, but I think that if you, if you direct, I'm on Twitter only in spirit, okay? Um, if you, um, I think if you directly at somebody on on Twitter, if you're like, hey, at Destiny, at Vosh, like hate things, criticism things, whatever, I think at that point you open yourself up to to critique from that person. I think even if you don't necessarily at them, if you're like, hey. Oh, Destiny, da 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 If you directly critique somebody on a public platform, regardless of the, the differing size of your platform, you it's fine for, for people to for, for that, that big person then to quote tweet that and to uh, to to uh to respond to that or whatever. I think that's perfectly fine. Other questions can be asked if it's just something in a vacuum and that has no relation to that person. And then it gets really blown up and picked up by like a big, a big creator who really strongly disagrees with it. Then I think the calculation is different. In the first one, absolutely, 100%, you're a big creator, you're being criticized, go, go, send in, do the quote tweets, okay? If, if you, someone's talking directly about you, they've opened themselves up to that, they're ready for the discussion. However, if they're talking about something that is, that is not really related to you at all and it's some small account um, and, and you really like blow it up, then... I think I think it's it it becomes a bit more uh, a bit more case by case basis. But yeah, that's my case on, on Twitter stuff. Uh, is is it also is it fair to compare what it said two years ago to now and say it's hypocrisy? To be fair, they're not saying it's hypocrisy. They're they're saying like this is a big fucking difference. Is this a genuine change of things? Is it like the, 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 I don't think they've accused them of hypocrisy yet. But yeah. 
for like targets to like engage with. You know what I mean? I don't really know. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know. This community's gotten pretty far, right? Oh, you know, uh, Danny, or I think Synth was here, is her name. Um, I followed her for a while on Twitter before unfollowing her because she was an insufferable, like, GGG stan. Um, but then I refollowed her on stream, actually, because of a horse joke. You know, I'm consistent. Um, Destiny, like, banned her from his chat a couple of days ago because she was pointing out that his behavior was attracting, like, a far-right audience that was engaging in transphobia unironically, and she just got banned for that. Okay, am I misremembering, or did he not say, like, banned for posting child pornography? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I banned every... Okay, he bans everybody for, for child pornography stuff. So. Even Danny said it himself. Half my bans say ban pedophile. That's just what I, that's what I put when I ban people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because he because he likes calling trans women pedos. He seems to do that a lot. Um, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Didn't Destiny believe it? Okay, Destiny should Vosh should know this. Okay, Vosh should know what Destiny types in his bands. Okay, Vosh has watched Destiny for long enough to know this. But really makes you think, huh? Anyway, for a while, Vosh defended Destiny as he might be a bit spicy, but he's a net good to the left, and it's good to criticize bad ideas on the left. Basin take. At this time, behind the scenes, Destiny was reaching out. Um. But yeah, obviously there can be there can be change in in two years and three years and one year and however long period of time. I want to remark, a lot of the things we've seen right now is, is three years old. So let's let's keep watching this. Uh, okay. Personally, to Twitch contacts he knew, try to get Vosh unbanned, and talking him up on his streams. This is, of course, after the initial exposure he'd already given him with multiple talks on his stream. Vosh would acknowledge at various points here of how he would not have a streaming career without Destiny. And although I, of course, think there's a ton of work Vosh put into his career, I think he's completely correct there. However, at a certain point... The it's pretty true. Without, I, I think it's, it's hard to know because it's like a counterfactual, but without the trailblazing that Destiny did, um, Vosh probably wouldn't be streaming at least uh, definitely not be as popular as he's right now probably i probably wouldn't be doing what i'm doing so it's undeniable that that destiny has had a really big effect and really big impact in building all of these people's careers the vouch destiny relationship began to grow sour as Vosh grew, Destiny continued to criticize leftists, and the pressure grew from an increasingly large fan base for Vosh to call out Destiny. This began to happen, and to Vosh's credit here, Destiny absolutely could have responded better in a way that made these initial discussions more amenable and keep the bridge. However, both of them grew increasingly more heated, and the bridge became more and more untenable. This was very concerning to me when it happened. What I speculated, from what I already knew about Vosh, on his own words, was that he would never concede to Destiny, who was now an enemy, and he'd be perfectly willing to lie about him if he thought he could optically get away with it. In addition, I knew that if Destiny took Vosh to where he knew he was weak, or moral or philosophical arguments, Destiny was too good of a debater, and Vosh was too weak in these areas to come out looking good in these arguments, even if he would only choose them when he tried to cherry-pick the max possible optically friendly arguments. This would happen with both the Kyle Rittenhouse argument and the philosophy tube and socialist hypocrisy debate. For Vosh to come out looking good in either one of these, or to even offer a coherent argument, he needed to have a consistent moral philosophical grounding that he could argue his positions from, which he had already admitted he did not. After those, I was interested in what Vouch's response would be. What I was hoping would happen would be some acknowledgement from him, even if he didn't agree with Destiny there, at least acknowledging he needed to brush up more on moral philosophy to ground his values out more, and that he'd look forward to the next opportunity to debate Destiny. Instead, what we got was the worst case scenario. He decided to start trying to dodge Destiny as much as possible while actively lying about Destiny's actions and positions, which has been demonstrated multiple times by Destiny with the help of his editor, and spinning a narrative that Destiny is spite-driven and bad faith. Wait, what is this? If we have any if context is missing, it's hard for me to talk about this because I'm not a Destiny Vosh lore master. I'm going to I'm going to comment mainly on the things that are being said here and on them in their own right, it's hard for me to to know about anything that might be being left out of this Reddit post. Mutuals who still like Destiny, that's totally, totally cool. But I would really encourage you to, like, look at him the way that I do now. Or, or I don't know. <laughs> oh, I think Vosh has a lot of things in this. That I pointed out. The reflexive anger and hatred towards lefties, the obsession with contrarianism, the backpedaling and the lying, but then condemning other people for backpedaling and lying and banning people who call him out his behavior when he does it. Because he does it a lot. True. And if there are any other content creators who know both of us, it's only a matter of time before he does to you what he did to, like, me and a bunch of other people. Destiny hasn't backstabbed me yet, so we'll see when that comes. You could contrast Destiny in the past year reviewing Vosh's content to Vosh reviewing Destiny's. Destiny is willing to defend Vosh when he feels he's right. So I made this video about uh, there was a, a young girl, she would have been like 18 or 19. I think she was almost 20, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I look a bit older than I am. I'm, tw I'm 28, so I would have been like 26 at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was 23. She was 23. Producer Lloyd, you got Jamie in the background there? Sorry. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie's looking it up. Yeah, pull up, uh, pull up her she wiki. Was... Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> was it data, but um, so she was 23 years old. I made fun of her in a video, and Vosh basically said, This is a child, and you're laughing at her. He said, You're a groomer, right? And he goes, You're a groomer, you're this, you're that. And and then this this whole thing from his audience, I didn't even see it. And these people are going, You're a groomer, you think it's okay to groom children? I was like, Fucking what? What the fuck are you talking about? I was just sitting in my home with my family, and uh, I got the, I got like the negative shit. So that's like the worst insult you can call someone, like, you know, to be involved with something so horrific as pedophilia, and then to see the shit that he's come out with over the past. Now, you have been very involved in uh, criticism against Vosh's opinions on uh, pedophilia, I believe. Is that fair to say? Um, <laughs> not actually. It's a long story. Um, it's a long story. He's just, he's made like, Vosh came out of my community. I'm not sure if you're aware of it or not. He used to go by okay. Irish Laddie a long time ago, and he was a person in my community. And um, <clears throat> there have been, uh, there's just been a lot of like random things that have come up uh, relating to him. Uh, I, I don't, I hate that I'm saying this because I shouldn't extend him any good faith whatsoever because he's truly a scumfuck human. I don't think he's an actual pedophile. Um, I just say shit like that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't So I, don't he, I think he's had some like dumb quotes that are like kind of hyperbolic. Like, 
I want to say at one point, I hope I'm not but I think he said something like, if you're okay with like child slavery, like people making yes. clothes in China, you should be okay with like child sex slavery. And it's like, I understand what he's going for there. He was trying to say that like neither of those are okay, but people took it as him saying that both are okay. Um, but yes. yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of the quotes are. But the, the only reason I have any sort of empathy for him there is that like people will do that shit to me a lot, where they'll take like one clip out of a conversation and say that like I'm pro like pedophilia, racism, transphobia, ism, whatever fucking ism they want. So yeah, it happens a lot. I'm sure it's happened well, to I, you a ton, right? So this is, this is one of the, the simplest tests I think you can get. Um, in order to, um, yeah, in, in order to to get a, a general idea about whether or not somebody will will engage honestly or how, is, is capable of like nuanced opinions about people. So, if somebody is capable of viewing people as not just black and white, completely bad, everything they do is bad, everything they do is wrong, they're always incorrect, they're always morally reprehensible, uh, or they're base, epic, cool, maybe slight criticisms here and there, but overall amazing. If you can, if you find somebody that is capable of, of, of like in, in cases defending people who they really don't like and they really dislike and they think on the whole is negative, that's, that, that's a, that's a good indicator, um, that that person is capable of nuanced thought and that they're more likely to have a reasonable, uh, perception of this person than somebody who goes in very like black and white opinions about some people. And I think that's good. And I think that's something that I see Destiny do a lot more when it comes to talking about Vosh. Then I see Vashta about Destiny. So I think that's that's something that is uh that is actually worth uh yeah worth pointing out there. Um let me I want to go back to some of the things that were written uh before this. Um let's see. Um, <laughs> um be some knowledge, if you didn't agree, at least acknowledging uh, okay, yeah, so when it comes to this, what was very concerning me is when it happened. When I speculated on what I already knew about Vosh in his own words that he would never concede to Destiny, who was now an enemy, and he'd be perfectly willing to lie about him if he could optically get away with it. In addition, I knew that if Destiny took Vosh to where he knew he was weak, moral such philosophical arguments, Destiny was too good of a debate, and Vosh is too weak in these areas that come out looking good in these arguments, and even if he chose uh, them, he would have to cherry-pick the max possible optically friendly arguments. This would happen with both the Cal Rittenhouse argument and the philosophy and socialist hypocrisy debate. For Vosh to come out looking good in either one of these, or even offer a coherent argument, he needed to have a consistent moral philosophical grounding that could argue his positions from, which he already admitted he did not. Um, I think this is pretty true. I think overall, I think that Destiny's moral opinions on the on the Cal Rittenhouse and on the philosophy tube socialist hypocrisy debate, I think that he he came off better in those debates, and I think his opinion is more more reasonable there. So I, I agree with this perception um, of of Destiny doing better on the moral grounds there, and Vosh doing worse on those grounds. After those, I was interested in Vosh's, what Vosh's response would be. I was hoping this would happen would be some acknowledgement from him, even if he didn't agree with Destiny, that at least acknowledging that he need to brush up more more philosophy and ground his values up more, and that he'd be looking forward to the next opportunity to debate Destiny. Instead, what we got was the worst case scenario. He decided to try to start dodging Destiny as much as possible while actively lying about Destiny's actions and positions, which has been demonstrated multiple times by Destiny with the help of his editor. This clip uh, of like the Terraria things, I don't think that proves that um, very like perfectly but um this yeah generally from the impression i get um about the way that destiny talks about vosh Savak talks about destiny i get the feeling that um oftentimes uh destiny will will be willing to to step in and, and defend vosh a bit more than what vosh would be willing to defend destiny you can contrast destiny in the past you're reviewing vosh's content to vosh's reviewing destinies destiny is willing to defend vosh when he feels he's right giving him credit for a good point and often ironically enough will state a better argument that he thinks vosh is going to make than what vosh actually does Vosh discussing Destiny content involves in lying about points Destiny's made, accusing Destiny of being insane, and saying that they're uh, saying on their face absurd reaches like Destiny had pro trans position in the past, yet he still uh, past and still does, but he's a transphobe now, as in his recent stream. Ask yourself, of these people, who's the one that seems spite driven? Um, this is not to say, obviously, even though I believe that generally about Vosh and Destiny's interaction, that Destiny's never a bit uncharitable to Vosh. That that obviously happens. Um, absolutely does. But when it comes to specifically looking at at, at positive um, representations of the other, I think Destiny does that a little bit better. Like one clip out of a conversation and say that like I'm pro like pedophilia, racism, transphobia, is whatever fucking is they want. So yeah, it happens a lot. I'm sure it's happened oh, to you a ton, right? Vosh discussing Destiny's content involves him lying about points Destiny's made, accusing Destiny of being insane, and saying on their face absurd reaches like Destiny had pro trans position in the past and still does now, but he is a transphobe. The other day, did you know? This is by the way, I'm totally poisoning the well here. But did you know while debating with Lance, Lance was making the argument that like Google that was still like reactionary or whatever? You know, okay. Um, uh, uh, Lance pointed out. That at Google, you need to get a legal name change if you're trans for your name card to be updated. So if you're a trans lady and you've got Michael on your name card, like you need a legal name change for them to confirm the change in the thing. And Destiny, I swear to God, I actually looked, I did double check to make sure it's real. Destiny, um, he said, is that really a big deal? <laughs>
Okay, this is Vosh was absolutely wrong on this. He is he is absolutely misrepresenting what 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 Destiny said in this debate. Um very clearly. Uh this is this is not I don't think this is an accidental thing, especially because he says specifically that he checked it multiple times to make sure he was correct. Um yeah, this is th th this is definitely Destiny blatantly misrepresenting what Destiny said uh, in this conversation. How can you wait? How can you, first of all, I wonder if you watch this whole debate. How can you summarize that so incorrectly? How someone identifies themselves on a name badge versus a security protocol to get into the building. But once you're inside the building, is it okay to be wearing a name badge in your opinion that says a name that you choose, not your dead name? I, I would I would have to know specifically like the protocol of the of how their badges work to really like know that. Because like in my in, in my corporate experience, in my environment experience at the casino, and this is all I have to go on, I could be wrong. I it's probably same scary. Like your name badge will usually represent like everything you can get into or not. So like the color of your badge might matter or a symbol in the badge might matter. If that can be anything, then people just like switch badges and go wherever the fuck they want. In that case, then no, you can't. But now if these are literally just like fucking like name tags or whatever, well then yeah. I guess you should be able to put whatever name you wanted if it doesn't mean anything. But if these badges are used to like sign into area, yeah, I guess. But like, my, my guess is going to be that. Okay, so would, would you then think it was kind of uh, hypocritical for them to not allow them to do something so simple as that, and then also use like the gay logo? Do they use their IDs to swipe country. in? Do they do they use their IDs to swipe in for access anywhere? I, I don't know. If you don't know I, this, I, then I, why? I, we, I, wait, 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 hold on. If you don't know this, why are you talking about this at all? You have no idea what you're talking about. Then you understand that, right? What do you mean? You have no idea what you're, because if they do use these to swipe in for things, and if these badges are like unique and important, then you would agree then that they probably should have their like state names on them. I don't know anything about their security protocol badges. I'm talking about name tags. Like, okay, but that's, do they that's use the emails? That's what the email sent. But we, do they use their name? Because some people, name some people have it's all built in. Like they, like they'll have chips on their like name badges and shit, and they use that to swipe into places. I, I don't know if people in my chat are just trying to argue or not, because I, I can't tell, but a lot of people in my chat, and I don't know, and I don't trust them, because I know a lot of them don't like themselves to say dumb shit, but there are a lot of people in my chat saying that you use your badge for entry into different areas and shit. I know a lot of people that work at Google, I don't know if they, but like, if, if that is the case, then, I mean, yeah, it makes sense that they would have to have the name on their state ID or whatever federal ID that they're recognized as is going to have to be on that badge if it's used for access areas. Otherwise, you just start giving your badges to people and shit, and people get into anywhere, right? That's, this is how, like, and it, it wouldn't surprise me if there's, like, standard protocol like, all, like, major tech companies, like... Yeah, and in which case, I would agree with you, if that, if that was the case. Okay, but then do you understand that you just staked out a huge position shitting on Google because of one issue that you don't know anything about? This is why I call you spineless. Right now. This is not spineless. That would be ignorant. There's a huge difference. Spineless would be me being like, well, I'm just going to back up this position until the end of time. I'm never going to. No, but here's what you're doing. You're, you stack up a position on this issue because it suits your ideology and it aligns you well with your ideological side. And you get all the social credit so, from so your. I'm describing exactly what's happening. Yeah. Now I want to read. Yeah, Destiny. Uh, Vosh 100% misrepresented what Destiny's take on this was. Uh, definitely. And usually I would I would be a lot more permissive, but Vosh specifically said that he like double checked this, um, over and over. Destiny's wrong here. Names are not unique in coded hashes that the IDs count regardless of them. But we don't know that. So, Destiny doesn't know that either. He's asking Lance if he knows. Because if it's the case that these, 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 these name tags, these badges, we don't even know what they are. These ID cards, if, if they are used, whatever the name tag referred to, to, to get into places, then there are probably company policies and legal policies in place to make sure that, hey, you need your state name on this thing because you're getting access to restricted areas. That's that that makes sense. And Destiny's asking if that's the case. And Lance doesn't know. Which he should know before he's accusing this of just being like a blatant transphobic thing, right? And yeah. Why well, I said before, usually I would give I would like let this slide a lot more, but Vosh specifically said that he double triple checked this. So yeah. Read more about this. After arriving and sending an issue the badge with my dead name, I noticed that there were many people on site, both cis and transgender, whose badges did not reflect their legal names. I don't even know. And this was a subcontractor, I guess? With G4S. Oh, it was a security subcontracting firm, G4S. Okay. Um, so he actually worked for security, too. But, Jesus, so it wasn't even Google itself. It was a subcontractor. Okay, wh okay, sorry. What's the, um... <laughs> it's actually a security officer. So, Holy shit. My assertion... Yeah, so it's also something for specifically security, and it wasn't even Google. It was a subcontractor for Google. So, yeah, this is... Um... Yeah, so this is this is absolutely Vosh misrepresenting and him being very confident in his representation of it, which was incorrect. So yeah, this is this is one of the more button ones. Version was that if they were ID badges that were used for like secure rooms or secure access, it would make sense that they would need to match like a state ID in order for them to be valid. You can't just change your name to whatever you want it to be. It's gonna have to match some sort of state ID. Also, it wasn't Google; it was a contractor for Google, and there were people working in security. They were so yeah. This person was literally a security firm subcontracted by Google, uh, subcontracted by Google. But like, okay, man, what a horrible, what a horrible summary of that conversation. <laughs> we're just... I, I hate how he chuckles and laughs too. Well, because he's doing the thing. This is like the ad humming part. He has to build a case against me. Um, I guess before he gets, I imagine he's probably gonna. Thumbs up. I don't see why it needs to be. It could be company policy. It could be. It could be. It could be some form of legal policy where if you have a, a, a thing that gets you into to restricted areas, that you need to prove that that thing belongs to you, and for that you need to show personal identification and that it matches with uh, the thing. I, I'm I'm not sure how it works, but it's a far cry. It's a far 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 cry from what Vosh is saying, which is that Destiny says that, oh, it's not a big deal, Lamau.
Like it's it's so far. We we're we we started over here, and now we're we're and now we're talking about something way 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 over there. We're we're so far gone from Vosh's original statement. I have like some more substantive critique, but first he has to kind of like he, he's it's funny because he says it. He's like, I'm no, I'm poisoning the well. But that's exactly what he's trying to do right now. He's trying to like, did you know that Destiny said this transphobic thing and this thing and this thing and then he's gonna get into the like, okay, so here's why he's bad or whatever, right? <laughs> We're beyond the truly beyond the pale here. Ask yourself, of these people, who is the one who seems spite driven? I feel like I should make. Uh, is that okay? What is this? What am I looking at? Is Destiny defending Vosh? Destiny defends Vosh. Talking Professor Flowers, non compete. Okay, that's he has he he, he did take Destiny side and Professor Flowers. He did take Destiny side and non compete. Yeah, he does go against that pedo accusations. Um. When things in the right, there's nothing calling out cat's racism. Yeah, he was also against both Contra actually and Cat in the recent thing going on. So there's probably there's might be more examples as well. Um, yeah. So it, it, Destiny will fairly frequently take Vosh's side on things. Make a video illustrating this because it's pretty insane how different it is with how we would treat each other. I'm not being charitable. I'm not doing any of that with Vosh. I'm gonna fuck him. <laughs> not wasting my time on that. Um, but it would be this is like a lot of video compiling. But I'll see what you guys posted in this thread when I finally work on this. I want to close with drawing attention to that recent stream. Vosh called it him beginning the Fortress arc, which is actually an apt name for him acknowledging that he's finally at a big enough point and had enough that he's actually going to start completely insulating himself in an echo chamber. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a bit rocky for a while. We got up, we've gone down. Um, I do think that focusing on building the Fortress, the Fortress arc, you know, I think the Fortress arc is going to be very good for this community. Trans people, even including ContraPoints, one of literally the most reasonable and best video essayists the left has ever had, are at best idpole woke scolds whose arguments he straw as cis men bad or are the mentally ill subhumans. He's referred to them as the past. Leftists are an insular community who hates him because he's right and has better, more practical arguments. Destiny's community are psychotic brigaders getting marching orders from our spite driven overlord, and anyone who backs Destiny is a simp orbiter who just wants to kiss his feet. And conservatives? Well, they're just fascists, just like George Bush and Antonin Scalia. So, on this specifically, um, Contra, he did make very, very like intense critique of Contra, which is fine um, in, in that specific interaction. Um, Destiny did as well. Um, but I, I even think, we even watched this, there was like an interview very recently where Vosh was asked, oh, you know, who are some people that you, like you, you admire or that you respect within the space? And Destiny, and Vosh even mentioned Contra actually. Although, what he congratulated Contra for was a bit, it was like, you know, oh, great video making skills, great script writer, great aesthetics, like that type of thing, um, that she's good in all those things. Uh, so it, it was a bit of like a, a bit of a, like a backhanded compliment a bit there but um yeah it's not like he's he's completely like thrown or given up on the on the contra bridge um i i don't think so i think this is this is a bit a bit heavy-handed here the simp orbiter who just wants to kiss his feet and conservatives well they're just fascists just like george bush and antonin scalia your argument Fuck, he doesn't like he actually said this i think this might have been the last panel that vosh and i were on together i don't know if we did another one but like him uh he tried to make the argument here that fucking george bush and scalia were fucking fascists what the fuck I came in here and I dived into the answer all your questions, and when you don't have any more rebuttals, you come up with, uh, isn't this conversation toxic? No, 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 that's, no, that's not a rebuttal. That's my point. It's, it's like coming in here just labeling right. stuff as fascist and bad is not a productive use of time. I didn't label things as fascist and bad. We were having a conversation. Hold on. Okay, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. We're moving. We're moving. Wait. No, 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 no. I like the group. I like the group. I'm lonely. I like the group. Look, hold on. We can. I can. I can amend this. Okay. can fix this. So saying labeling things fascist and labeling things fascist, comma and bad are two different things, and it's also very different from saying that I'll write off anything because it could potentially have any fascist Wait, so just on that Did thing, I say you would label something Bush? fascist and good? Uh, I think that there are things that a fascist would do that could be good, like protectionism under some circumstances. But they wouldn't be fascist, wouldn't be bad, they wouldn't be This is so stupid. It's easy to explain why you're having this problem, okay? No, I feel like this is an exceptional thing There are multiple There are multiple Okay, well, let me... I didn't actually finish Stop, stop, go. God, I hate these panels. Okay. These panels are actually fucking terrible. Um, this is Sim speak. Um, point there was that they had different definitions of, uh, so Destiny's definition of, uh, of, of fascism is fascism is something that arises when you have a combination of policies and, and cultural things taking place, like authoritarianism, protectionism, conservative and traditional, you know, social values, da, 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 da. all those come together to create fascism. However, Vosch's definition was more like, okay, Fascism is each of those things in their own right, partly. So that's why that's why when, when Destiny asked that question, it was like, okay, you know, what about, okay, would you say there's anything that's fascist that's good? And, and they would be like, okay, yeah, like, so for example, protectionism, that's like the schism in definition there. And then he labeled Bush and Scalia as fascist, which uh, I, I don't think is accurate, but yeah. 
Transcript is under the dots. Yeah, I don't think it's here yet. Or we don't know there's a transcript for this, right? But let's look at the arguments in the stream. We've already discussed one gem. The destiny is a transphobe who used to argue trans positive positions, still argues them, and still is a trans positive person. Another gem is him accusing destiny of being someone who cares about the truth or the positions, and him actually thinking that is a good criticism. I don't know if he's lying to look at his audience when he feigns ignorance here, or is genuinely that stupid, but of course political positions are downstream from actual morality. If you're not willing to do that hard work of piecing together your worldview from the ground up, you have no way of actually defending your positions. This is why when you're put in a situation where you go up against a good debater and actually have to reason for moral principles, you lose. Yeah, I think that this is so this critique uh against against destiny of like oh he he cares about the truth he cares about what is right more than his positions what what is the truth and what is right is going to be downstream from your moral framework which means that this isn't actually a critique of of destiny really at all um yeah which which is a, a bit of a, a silly silly criticism i, I agree that th th this criticism here is 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 pretty silly but yeah the final point was him talking about how DGG is psychotic. We're brigaders. I've literally never once gone into another person's stream to say something negative. And that even if we aren't, we're okay, culpable. Again. What, what, one DGG are saying they've never gone to another person's stream to say something negative. It's, it's not great proof, but yeah, we'll keep going. These are part of the community. This moral high ground was disgusting to me. Vosh was a fan of Destiny for years and with him through the most edgy phases of his career. He never voiced any of these criticisms then because he was perfectly willing to be a parasite to Destiny while he was building his budding streaming career. Now, when the optical waves are against Destiny and the best course of action is to condemn him for his career reputation, now he voices all of these condemnations. This shit is genuinely disgusting and one of the most egotistical, pathetic, self-serving things I've ever seen someone do. So these things are hard to prove, right? It's it's pretty difficult to prove this, and I think you need way more than what's been demonstrated here to prove this for sure. So it's entirely possible that this is Vosh being completely hypocritical. He doesn't care. He will engage with Edinus or whatever until it kills him to grow, 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 up until the point where it doesn't anymore, and then he will, like, 180 and go back. It's possible. It's also possible that he genuinely has have a change in these things uh, and the way he views these things and the productivity thing. Um, and because of that, he has a different opinion about Dusty and the types of things he says and the things he does. That's also possible. Most likely, it's a combination of the two. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, th that's why these types of things are very difficult, because it's very hard to make definitive statements about stuff like this, about what's going on in somebody's head, you know? In the same stream, he talks about his real motivations. He talks about how he's reached hundreds of thousands, millions, according to my analytics. Brings up how he's forgotten all the money he raised, the most transparent, humble brag I've ever seen. Oh yeah, when he was on stream, he was like, guys, I didn't even, I forgot about the, the money we raised for Ukraine. <laughs> Which, again, I don't do it for the credit. You know, I really hope that this big live stream, the charity, the positivity, all of it, I hope- okay, This is fairly recent, but to be fair, this is like how many hours in to like a 24 hour stream? Look at him. My guy's fucking tired, but anyway, this is a bit of a cringy clip. Credit. You know, I really hope that this big live stream, the charity, the positivity, all of it, I hope that it in, uh, encourages some people who are on the fence about me to be more open to working with me in the future. Working with me, I mean, you know, speaking amicably. That would be nice, I think. And when a bunch of the oh, oh, wait, dead. Sorry, just one moment. We actually just got raided by Hassan. My oh, wonderful friends, hello. Please, yes, just, just hank my quick chat last raid. Hello, we are enjoying it. Some wonderful and highly nostalgic. Gold 64. Uh, we are right now raising funds for Palestine Children Relief Fund, uh, an organization that assists the lives of the over 1 million children in Gaza and underserved populations if there ever was one. If you're able. But no, I think this is an incredibly dumb line of reasoning. Ooh, Griff me. Ooh, my problem with Hassan is that he's the biggest leftist streamer and I want to be that. I don't know what you mean. My viewership spiked in the election, but now it's back down. Politics streaming is rough. Mark feels okay, man. Okay. <laughs> Writing this as like, oh, you know, Vosh genuinely has like an actual resentment for Hassan and therefore Vosh accepting Hassan's raid is like hypocritical, whatever. This this doesn't prove it. This is this is very clearly a joke. Um yeah, this isn't I don't think this is good. Able to, if you're willing to, exclamation point, donate in the chat, we're going to do the stream as the funny bar down at the bottom, which has already exceeded my expectations, it's tremendous to have you all here, I love you very much. Okay, sorry, guys. Yeah, thank you, have fun. Um, which, again, I don't do it for the credit, but it's just, it's just weird, because after the PCRF stream, like, you know, it felt like it defined the positivity in the community for a while. It was like a good rallying cry, I guess, for, for good stuff here. Um, but obviously that got overshadowed by the JK Rowling stuff, and... You know, it all kind of spiraled out from there. Um, <clears throat> and I felt a bit upset at you guys about that. But then I realized, the second thing I realized, was that I had forgotten about it too. How addressing criticisms is not worth his intelligence and time before bizarre. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like it's, it means that he's like it get caught up in so many negative things that you forget the positive sometimes. I yeah, th this last segment it doesn't hit very hard to me. Tangent where he says Putin brought up J.K. Rowling because of him, and that what he wants his audience to do when people criticize. Wait, where are we reading right now? Uh, okay, cool. Okay, yeah. The second thing I realized was that I had forgotten about it too. How addressing criticisms is not worth his intelligence and time before bizarre tangent where he says Putin brought up J.K. Rowling because of him. Okay, Putin brought up J.K. Rowling because of him. That's, I think that's, that's a bit of a joke in there, okay? That's, that's my, my crazy, my crazy guess. I think there's a bit of a joke in there. And that what he wants his audience to do when people criticize him is to tell him about all of the good things he's done. Vosh is an egotistical, self-serving piece of shit with an overinflated opinion whose concern is not actually about either his political beliefs or the truth, but about his reputation and his brand. The only time he will ever address criticism, ever apologize, 
<clears throat> or ever show any kind of ability is only when he thinks it will help his reputation and brand. So this is, once again, a lot about what's going on in somebody's head, which is kind of, it's very difficult to prove. I'm not sure if I've seen that proven perfectly um, in this. There's definitely been very, there's been good critiques of Voshnir, but, but yeah, this is like a, a very, very high bar here specifically when it comes to, um, oh, you know, Vosh wants when people criticize him to tell them all the good things he's done. I don't think this is indicative of a lot at all, really. Like, hey, you know, because my name is always brought up in positive connotations, how about we try to focus this about about the positive things that are going on, um, about the positivity around us, so that all the discourse, whenever something pops up about us, it's not just, oh, negative, 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 that there are some of the positive things that we brought up that, that are being brought forth as well. That's that's fine. That's entirely okay. I don't think this is indicative of, like, being super egotistical or whatever. Irish laddie. I look forward to you proving this entire post right. You will dodge these criticisms outright, only addressing them if you think you have a narrative you can try to spin to boost your reputation. And not only will you continue to be too much of a bitch boy coward to ever engage with Destiny again, you won't even be able to engage with a challenge from anyone from his community. Do that if it makes you feel better. But never forget, at the end of the day, Destiny in this community, despite your lies and vilification, is the only reason you're a streamer now, and not some socialist dipshit nobody sitting in the poor part of Beverly Hills trying to get laid on lefty discords by talking about how much it turns you on, picturing their buttholes getting ripped open by horse cock. Jesus Christ. Okay. Holy shit. Um. Yeah. I think it would have been. Now it's now it's way far gone, but completely cutting off and not talking anymore between Vosh and Destiny, which was largely on Vosh's side. I don't know if that was if that was a positive thing, but I mean, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done so. I, I wouldn't have if I if I got to choose, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had it that way. But yeah, this is pretty rough. Jeez. I saw it during the Doe and Riley drama, I saw a clip of Vosh pretty much where Vosh pretty much gave the okay for Riley to get harassed. Does anyone remember this or have the clip? Also another clip that sounds of Vosh probably is the posture now, montage. <laughs> Dude that fucking <laughs> Oh shit. Hold on. This is true. I remember this. I just want to see if I can't find that clip sometime. I, I, I think that, um, I, I think I'm comfortable, though, that, uh, if, if it does turn out that after that conversation, Riley's takeaway is that I said it would be okay to have sex in public, uh, I'm okay with going nuclear on Riley. Uh, we, we no longer need any respect for her. Uh, we can, we can sort of shame people for even continuing to give a fuck about her. You can call her whatever you want. I don't care. Now, keep in mind, to be fair, Vosh said, if she says this, right, not... Oh, you know, just go nuclear, go at it right now. So that, there's a bit of a difference there. Um, but yeah. if it does turn out that after that conversation, Riley's takeaway is that I said it would be okay to have. If it turns out that this is the take, so it's not quite as bad. It's probably still shouldn't do it, but sex in public. Uh, I'm okay with going nuclear on Riley. Uh, we we no longer need any respect for her. Uh, we can we can sort of shame people for even continuing to give a fuck about her. You can call her whatever you want. I don't care. Now keep in mind that's what Vosh said about Riley. Can somebody link what I said about Demon Mama? One of the first times I got accused of being majorly trans. Because I don't want to misquote myself and make myself sound better than I was. But I'm pretty sure my clip was like, I'm not going to enforce cross-platform bans anymore. I don't care what happens or whatever. That's it. Vosh is like giving explicit endorsement to like nuking her. Like compare, please. Compare, does anybody have? If, if somebody could find that so that you can have my exact words, so it doesn't look like I'm misquoting myself. Um, I, I I would like to compare that because I got roasted so hard for that. Uh, there's absolutely no charity reserved for, um, for people who behave that way. Absolutely none. Just want to see if I can. Why George Bush is fascist. I'm guessing. Yeah, wait, I just want to know, how are Bush or Scalia a fascist? So with Scalia, I would need to go back over the case rulings that he's given because I don't have a great memory for the judicial stuff. I said that earlier, I'd be happy to come back with a lot more arguments because this is stuff that I have remember from podcasts I've listened to and articles that I've read and conversations that I've had. Okay, how could you listen to podcasts, have conversations, and read articles and not remember a single reason why he might have been a fascist? Not even one reason. You've done all that research, you remember a single fucking thing, bro? Bush, I think the argument is a lot more direct, and it's obviously something I remember a little bit more directly. I think that Bush, the obvious ones, the straightforward ones, are obviously the 2020 election and uh, the extent to which it was not fairly earned, in my opinion. Even if Bush fucking walked down and stole the election- He misspoke. He misspoke. So that's not a fascist. That, that, like, you call it authoritarian or autocratic, maybe, or totalitarian, I don't know, some weird shit, but that's still not fascist. That has nothing to do with fascism. Like, um, the broader ones, though, are the- He said 2020, I was saying it. 2000. 2000. And he did. He went through the entire process. So it's kind of hard to call him a fascist when he went through the U.S. Pro like, God, oh my God, this panel was painful. This is probably some of the dumbest stuff I've ever seen Vosh do before. Like some of the, like this is Vosh's worst. <laughs> okay, this is the only jerk off video. I don't know if this is. I've never seen this. Oh, here's your cross platform. Oh, these are the comments. That I okay, so compare what Vosh said about how he, how you can do whatever or anything is good. Call whatever name you want. This is what I said about Demon Mama. How I know him here. We're no longer enforcing cross platform bans against Demon Mama nor Chaos Mel. And starting tomorrow night, all the content is banned from my community for accessing. That was my. I got roasted. I got called. Okay, so to be fair, so not enfor not enforcing cross platform bans. I don't know what the exact reason for this was, but you know, I mean, uh, but also at the same time, all the content is banned. Uh, from the community, which means that you're also going to have less 
a, a much a considerably lesser risk of people from his community going over there. So it's like a double-edged sword. Called a transphobe for this. I got called a transphobe for this because people are like, oh, you're telling your community to go and harass a transphobe. People call me a, a transphobe for that. Coming of a person on a civil rights. I mean, obviously, there does have to be some relationship between things you do and like your point of divorce like that, right? Oh, and then this is Vosh giving justification, I think, for why it's okay to go after RGR's fucking uh, bar license. Bar license? Attorney license? To go after her to try to, try to make it so she can't get certified from the bar. Like, I mean, I think. Um, now, you could say it's like esoteric in this online drama. It doesn't like perfectly describe her value elsewise, but I think there's at least an argument we have here. Dylan says, every Maryland queer I know who knows her advocacy has shining reviews. Her stuff online offline has been great. The last thing I want is someone doing the work before not the work. As a queer, I think she does good work. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that necessarily. Then Doe says, thanks for making your stance clear. I'm glad we can all be clear about our stances here. You just think it's cool to play defense for people who say buying human beings for sex is quote, merely about the buying. If that's how you want to advocate for you, save it with your chest. And then it seems in there. At least in this case, we're not really talking about going after one's job, right? We're just talking about one's suitability for a progressive board. I mean, at the very least, what per <laughs> Okay, I don't know about this one. Okay, hold on, what is this? <laughs> My posture. Okay, well, well I'll, I'll probably show up later, okay? Hold on, that's, 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 uh, <laughs> nothing about firing her. She's talking about questioning whether or not she's the most apropos candidate for this specific opening in this operations of this firm. Like, this is a bit of a, a weird way to put it. Person does online is definitely relevant to their presence on such a board, is it not? Imagine him, like, qualifying, like, we should cancel her out of her real-life advocacy because of an online argument about whether, like, showing your feet in public is, like, fucking sexual rap. Like, Jesus Christ. Booksmart's roasting you for the cross-platform comment. How long do you think Destiny's Twitter will last? I don't know. Why would you announce you're not enforcing cross-platform for harassment against a specific person and act like that's not directing hate towards them? That's what I'm talking about, bro. If you guys are smart enough to realize that Trump inside... That's fair, to be honest. Okay, I don't know where those DMs are for, but announcing, like, hey, we're no longer enforcing cross-platform bans, um, is going to probably cause some extent to more people doing it, unless the reason for them doing it is something else like some logistical issue in which case they need to announce it because people will say oh well you said you you enforce cross platform bound yet you didn't hear but I, I don't know i don't know if, i don't know i'm not a lore master okay? i don't know enough about this but you know the violence of the fucking capital then you're smart enough to realize how him saying that will encourage harassment against these people and if you can't see those two things then you're exactly the component of his community that i'm trying to complain about you're exactly what the problem is so this whole time i've been ranting you've been like oh, really twisted. Don't worry, it's you it's literally it's you <laughs> if you were wondering I mean, it would have to be, I assume. If I was on board with, like, a LGBTQ advocacy group, you know, uh, and some of some of my joker takes were made visible, uh, I, I know that would have an influence, especially when she's a public figure. Well, yeah, right, I mean, you know, we're, we're responsible. You have to step down low. There's a reason why I'm not on the board for any. Actually, that's not true. I think I'm kind of, like, on the PR board for that LGBTQ museum that's going to be opening up. Okay, so here's the actual Twitter, and then here's Dylan's Twitter. Apparently, people want me to... show something about him attacking... and slandered for it. I feel like my main issue here, after all of this, is that you guys didn't go far enough in harassing a queer woman of color. I feel like you guys could have gone way harder with that. I never do this stuff. I don't do it. I never do this. The most I'll say, and oh, even when I've said this, I've gotten destroyed. This. The most I'll say is like, These I don't- are strange. Just, just be like me. Be boring. Be, don't, don't say dumb shit like this. Every, every single fucking, <laughs> every single, every single streamer who's edgy does this. Just why? <laughs> Just, just, why can't you people be normal? God. <laughs> In the eternal wise words of Bastiat. Oh my god. I don't care if I lie about this person. Remember when I said, um, Demon Mama did the thing where you post something from Fortune, like, oh, look at what people posted. And I was like, oh, nice job, it's your own post or whatever. And people are like, do you know that she posted? I don't know if she posted or not. Like, it's fucking, people say that people post Fortune. And like, you think it's okay? Well, I like, yeah, fuck it, I don't care about it, right? This is like the farthest I've ever gone. I never, ever, ever, have I ever? In 10 years. I don't think so. Bring it up if you want. Pretty sure not in five years. I've never been like, all right, guys, let's go. We're all going to go harass the fuck out of this person. Let's get him. Because if for no other reason, even if I wanted to, it looks so bad. It looks so horrible. No fun. Okay, look, you can do that as you jokes if you want to. I'm just saying that, like, God. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's just weird. You can do it. Edgebox gets viewers. True. They do get viewers. Uh, but if you're boring, uh, but if he was boring, he'd be a 100 viewer. And you're like, you kicked W. True. He would be. But like, damn. <laughs> It helps me situations like this. Oh my god. Horrible. It looks so horrible, okay? It just, it's not good. It, it's just not a good look. It's just not good. It's not a good look. You can't do it. But like these people like explicitly... In good faith, and was then harassed, bullied, and slandered for it. I feel like my main issue here, after all of this, is that you guys didn't go far enough in harassing a queer woman of color. I feel like you guys could have gone way harder with that, you know? That's my main issue. I feel like the logistics here just didn't pan out. Like you could have gone way harder. That's the main issue, you know? Honest. Oh yeah, same shirt. What's up? That's consistency right there. Wait, she claims to be black nationalist. Yeah, wait, doesn't she literally- Wait, hold on. Thought Slime is literally, um, conflating this in the same way Professor Flowers accused me of conflating it. I'm pretty sure that Professor Flowers identifies the black- I think the worst you could maybe get me on is when I've said, like, these people should be bullied. If you want to call that like me, but, like, nothing that even approaches this level of, like, you guys need to go harder. Like, Jesus Christ. I think he did it to Contra as well. This name Vosh both seem to be- Yeah, there, there's- there's- guys. There is- <laughs> There- there is problems on both sides, guys. There you go. That's my conclusion. Oh. All right, thank you guys. Keep it up, though. Don't get complacent. Keep it up, oh, guys. Oh, listen, what this this was in his new place. So for this, the more.
viewer in the replies being like, that's not what's happening right here. Like, this is necessary, okay? Publicly shame her into changing her mind on this. All right, thank you. Hold on, sorry. This is my good-ass clips. <laughs> Fuck, oh, if we go over this now when I do my manifesto, you're going to get a lot of repeats, maybe. This is good stuff to have. Are we done? Are we free? The video's not over yet. Just six more minutes. <clears throat> Hold on. Sure, I don't think DGG is transphobic, but, but when Destiny says, if you say something bad on Twitter about this person, I'll not ban you, DGG will almost inevitably lead to harassment of that person. Did you harass them? No, they, there's never all this person that happens. Here, the reason why I say this, okay, is because listen, okay, I only. Not, this is interesting. Why did he say that? Only person that I know of. Maybe other people do this and I don't know, but I'm the only person I know of. And I don't do this because of fucking lefties or whatever bullshit. This has just been my personal, this has been my personal thing, is if other people in my community go and harass people in other communities, I ban you in all my communities because I have no tolerance for that brigading shit. I don't, I don't like that. It makes me look bad. It makes it hard for me to associate with other people because my community will go and attack them. Like, I never have ever approved of that. And, I, and I've always told people, if I catch you doing it anywhere, I'll ban you everywhere. But that's been, I'm the only motherfucker that does it. Nobody else has an enforcement policy like that. Nobody that I've heard of. Maybe they do and they just don't publicize it. But like, that's something that I do to go out of my way to be nice to other people. But for Demon Mama Chaos, fuck that. Like, if they're gonna call me transphobic anyway, all that bullshit, I'm not gonna go out of my way to hunt down every person that they say. So I was like, oh, fuck that. You know, I'm not doing cross -life. So that, that, Destiny can think this, right? But that, that doesn't contest what the, what the, the person said. Because the person said that, hey, doing this will lead to, will, by a matter of probability and statistics, lead to more people doing it against them, which is true. But Destiny hasn't really contested or said that that's not true. He's just given a justification for it, which you might find agreeable or not agreeable. But yeah. I'm just not going to leave it. I'm banning all the content from my community. Fuck it. All right. You can say that maybe that like implicitly encourages harassment, which I maybe. Sure. I, I'll, I'll get that. But it's still nowhere near the level okay. of explicitly tell okay. telling your community to do it. So he acknowledges this as well. That's good. Okay, here's this clip. I don't know what this is. I'm sorry, this clip is very funny to me. <laughs> My posture looks good. That's all I care about. Did you hold frame? <laughs> yeah, no, I held okay, frame. Okay, he held frame. There we go. That's the only thing that matters in these fucking debates. <laughs> yeah, Bastia slaps just a little bit. Yeah, well, Destiny is going to get fucking obliterated because I've seen how that guy sits. <laughs> I was three months into my workout arc, okay? Oh, the posture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's <laughs> These are all different moments in the debate, by the way. It's not just the same thing being looped. This is all a different different moment from the <laughs> Yeah, my boss used to be really bad, okay? Yeah. That was a good it did clip. used to be pretty bad, okay? That's good. That's good. Yeah, the first time I watched that I thought it was the uh, I thought it was the same clip over and over again, but anyway. That was a good man. We're almost there, guys. Just four more minutes. Something might happen. We'll see. Might happen. Okay. The rift is calling? Huh, no, it's not. Elden Ring is calling. Thank fuck. <laughs> Dan wanted to kill me when this happened. <laughs> oh, no. This is the most bizarre thing Vosh has done. Did I ever try to pedo jacket dough? I don't remember. Do you notice no one ever says it's you? They say DGG but mean you, so they can walk it back when they get called out for it. Yeah, Vosh even like preemptively covered himself by saying, "Well, remember when Gamergate happened?" Um, oh yeah, I didn't even side with RJ on this debate. They just assumed I did because they think I'm as partisan as they are. Um, fuck, what was I saying? Oh god, I just. Yeah, that's another case where where Destiny sided with Vosh in that in that conflict. They sided with uh, with Vosh and Doe actually, which again proves that and Destiny hates Vosh. And he hates Doe, but he still sided with them over RGR, who he's way more positively inclined towards, which, yeah, uh, another indication of a more, like, nuanced perception of people. <clears throat> Alright, after, are we, come on. We almost done. August, why is this in the video? What is this, August? Calling, oh yeah. What when is Vosh was saying things like, oh, this is like when Gamergate had 5% of the people were horrible doxing harassers, and the 95% weren't, and anytime you call out the 5%, the 95% would cover for them. He was trying to like preempt that idea that like this doesn't happen and I don't lead it. But again, I think I think a good part of this can be traced back to that these people don't know what online harassment actually looks like. They think that um, they think that like seeing three or four people in a chat saying something mean must be evidence of like huge harassment, and it's just not. Or, or a huge brigading, rather, and it's just not. Um, Music is good. Oh! Is that really a three, four hit combo? Okay. 
Oh, okay. I fucking died. Put it in there. Why is this in the video, August? A Josie person posted five instances of harassment from DGG. Yeah, remember, okay? Remember, remember, remember. Psychologically. Okay? Joey, if do what August couldn't, okay? Cut this out of the end of my video. If you don't, and this is in the video, and someone watching this is a YouTube video now sees that this is still in here, this will be really awkward for you, Zoe, okay? Just letting you know. If, if you ask somebody, or here, you should know this. You guys know that et cetera means I don't have any more examples, right? So when somebody's like, can you name all the times it happened? You're like, yeah, it happened A, B, C, et cetera, et cetera, right? You say et cetera, well, you really, you really mean like, that's all I know. And I'm just like saying that to make it sound like I know like way more examples. Um, if somebody, if I ask somebody, like post an example of harassment that you're getting online from my community, and like two out of the five of those examples is just people calling them like a loser or saying like cope, then like they probably don't get that much real harassment. If you can't even come up with five good examples, I don't believe that it's a thing that's happening that much. That's like a general rule. People always open what with what's strongest. If they're opening something weak, they probably don't have a lot of stuff. Okay. Cool. We're good. Leave it in, etc. All right. There we go. Wait, we got it. We ran through it.